if you slow things down, that is where you value life most. Okay? Because the Philippines is way, way different from the West. Bring your patience here. Thank you so much, JR, for joining us today. I wanted to sit down with you and ask some questions. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi, um, Lex, thank you so much for this opportunity to be with you and to really like uh, spread the information about the Philippines. So our company started way back eight years ago, 2017. We, kick, we, do have, we, we started our registration with the government offices here. So we have our um, business licenses to start with. And that will actually give you an assurance that we are a legit company. We are not a fly-by-night company. And right now, we are um, venturing for the visa and immigration um, services in which the main advocacy is really to guide our foreign friends once they go to the Philippines. And on the side, we do some consulting for the real estate side because by profession, I'm also a licensed real estate broker here in the Philippines and other matters. Maybe not all, but basically what you primarily need to kick up your um, decent, proper, and legal living here in the Philippines, in which it will actually give you a peace of mind being in a different country, because the Philippines is way, way different from the West. The first question I have for you today is, what do you love about your country? <laughs> That's a good question, actually. And um, it's basically the culture that we have the culture which is embedded with different uh, fusions of um, countries before, like we have been, uh, we have an influence from the American side, from the Spanish side, and it actually blends well right now. It has a pros and cons, nothing is perfect. So um, that in a way, when I ask my foreign clients, when, why, why do you come to the Philippines aside from the cost of living? Because Philippines might be expensive up to some extent. So it would really depend on your lifestyle. But the culture, the people, those are the primary things that will prevail on top with the answers to the question. Because probably when you actually walk and try to be in the Philippines, you can see them smiling. You just don't know what have they been through on their personal lives. But when you walk, they're just gonna, um, they're gonna treat you with a warm smile. No intentions, they just wanted to reach out to you. The second question I have for you today is, how did you learn about the need for foreigners to be supported with long-term visas? Um, I get few friends before when I'm because my prof um, when a uh, few years back I played badminton, so I have some friends who are actually foreigners, and when I hear them like, oh, I I've been scammed, I trusted these people, like uh, you give them the money to do the extension for you to do the process of the visa, and then eventually it didn't work out. Also, on the real estate side, I put in some down payment, and there you go. After a few months, they're gone. They cannot be, like, it hurts me. And up to some extent, it embarrasses me as a Filipino because they are coming here. They are actually trusting us, the culture in itself. But that minority does not represent the majority either. So when you come to the Philippines, I myself wanted also to benchmark our country with other countries. I just have a recent trip with Thailand. Admittedly, pros and cons between two countries, similarly, tropical vibes, culture-wise different. Infrastructure is also different. Thailand is much more progressive than the Philippines, but the Philippines also has something to offer, which Thailand does not have. So those are the things that we really wanted you to invite to come to the Philippines and see it for yourself. I'm not saying that you stay here, test the waters, be here 6 to 12 months, and see it for yourself. It, it works well for you, then good. If it's not, look for your options. At the end of the day, you decide which best fit for you. The third question I have for you today is, what are the visa options for younger guys? Apart from the spousal visa and the retirement visa, there are still a lot of visa options that the Bureau of Immigration Office can, uh, can provide. Because right now, most of the people come to the Philippines like on their uh, 50s and above, they wanted to retire here, something new, new culture, they fell in love, they have a successful marriages. Well, it's good up to some point. Now, uh, on the other side also, for those who will not be hooked up on that aspect, they're also on the retirement visa. Now, there are uh, still a lot. If I'm going to mention it here, we will actually take a lot of time for us to discuss it here. But you can actually start off to have the, the tourist visa extension. 
Because the tourist visa extension will give you a good leeway for you to stay here in the Philippines and test the waters if it works for you. Like, if you're from the U.S., you're non-visa required, you come here, just your flight, you're given 30 days, you can extend that up to 36 months. That's three years. And I think 6 to 12 months will be enough for you. Like, okay, I wanted to set up a business here. Once I set up the Philippine company, and then you can actually apply for the 9G working visa. That's one. So that's one of your options that you can take. And I think most of you on our age range now, um, there are actually things that are circulating right now, like a nomad visa. Now, I just have a brief look about the visa. However, that visa is still being uh, processed to be approved and to be available. More likely, when I see the requirements of the um, nomad visa, if I'm a U.S. citizen like yours, I would test the waters. I would just come here. It's much more simpler for me. Like doing the extension is not that hassle because the nomad visa will uh, require you to submit a set of requirements, employment contracts, and also tax returns from the country, or the, from the company that uh, from the country where your company is um, located. So just make it simple. Six to 12 months, test the waters, then go here. The fourth question I have for you today is, what is the most common reason someone reaches out to JRC? They wanted to have the convenience. Um, sometimes they, have, they hear horror stories that it's difficult and that. So we help them navigate through the process. And structure-wise, I wanted to be honest with you. Like One good example, uh, when I, sorry to compare, but it's just, just the reality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, from the city proper of Cebu, one of the cities in the Philippines, going to the airport, seven kilometers will take you at least an hour. Okay? So that, that's on the infrastructure side. But I know the Philippine government is really working hard on it to really improve from time to time. And Thailand-wise, 28 kilometers. That's, that's super helpful. Um... The sixth question is, what are your suggestions to help foreigners to slow down? You know what? It comes with perspective. I've been talking also with other clients of ours. Like, JR, you do need to really, like, adopt the Western side because the Philippines has its own unique way of doing things. Because being slower paced than the West is also a gift. Why? If you slow things down, that is where you value life most. It's not about all the material things that you have, at the end of the day, it's your perspective on how you live life. And I think that is one of the most common reasons why people from the West come to the Philippines or any Southeast Asian nation. And okay, I, I would like to add on that, bring your patience here, okay? Uh, it will not work if you will be um, reasoning out the way how a Western would think. I'm not saying that you change, we just meet halfway. Because you might be perceived that you are too aggressive to have things done. So sometimes, like typical example, um, you're coming from probably more than 10 hours flight. You come to the Philippines, you've been grumpy, and you have a back pain. You have all the pains that you have. You're not feeling well out of that flight. Come to the immigration officer. You just need to fill out the thing, and you become to reason out. And what would happen? You become unruly. You become tagged as disrespectful to an, to an authority, an immigration officer. So that will not put you in a good place because you might be barred from entering the country. Worse, you will be included in their derogatory records such as blacklist, watchlist, or whatever is applicable for you. That's a simple thing. So when you come here to the Philippines, do some cultural research first. Cultural, not places. Because places are like easy. They're all beautiful. Yeah, they're all beautiful. <laughs> and when you see the picture, see it personally because there would be reality versus expectations the seventh question is is there any way for a foreigner to come back from being blacklisted it vary by situation because it depends on what are your value violations at that point now it has all it can be lifted in a way it's not the end of the line what i wanted to stress out right now is or what what i wanted to point out is you coming here it does not mean that the entire culture of the Philippines will, will adjust to your culture. We meet halfway. Like on our form, so how do we meet halfway? We let them understand the process. Here's how it's going to work. Here's the procedure. Bear with us because we want also, you, we need, not want, you need your cooperation also to have things done. Because if you don't, 
we will have a problem. And at the end of the day, we're, all, we're always helping you how to navigate things here. Just have your peace of mind. Don't be in a situation wherein it's undesirable for you. You come here for a reason, go back always to that. In what ways can a foreigner help you to help them? Um, number one, we need their full cooperation. That's, that's very important because without their cooperation, um, we will have difficulties along the way. Number two, understanding. Understanding about the process here is different. It will not be like the same with the West, like, okay, hey, I want my title to be done in days. Here, it won't work. We're, we're, we're talking about months. But we will be actually navigating or going through you the process of, okay, this is the first step, these are the second step, third step, and the final step to be done. I think those two for now uh, will be one of, of will be the, the two points that will be, uh, I'll be sharing because th those are very important. Understanding and your cooperation. It will not be uh, a dance alone, but when we tango, you dance, we dance. Can you speak on student visas? Are you affiliated with any universities locally that can help with those? Okay, um, student visas have a different uh, procedures. So once you will be in a student visa, the immigration office are accrediting that school, and that school has the specific liaison officer. So that actually is a separate department from the Bureau of Immigration, wherein it's only sp um, it focused more on those foreign students who wanted to learn in the Philippines or to study here in the Philippines. Now, after that, that is where our scope of um, jurisdiction will come into play. So we don't have basically jurisdiction with the student visas of the time being, but for you to be guided initially, if you want to be enrolled in a school, first thing that you're going to ask if that school is accredited with the Bureau of Immigration, and then if they say yes, you coordinate with the liaison officer because they're the one being authorized as a representative of the school to transact your student visa in the Bureau of Immigration. Are there any good reasons for a foreigner to obtain a work permit? Which is not registered in the Philippines or other countries that actually will comply to the country, the taxation will actually comply with the country where the business is operating and where the business is registered. So I think that's the first thing, distinction that we would like to take at, as of this point because, okay, if I'm also the foreigner wanting to go to the States, I would, like, I would like to make sure that everything is legal. I don't want to be in a situation, hey, I'm in a foreign land, I've been stuck, I have problem, it will actually like mess up everything, I don't want that. I think that's, that's the norm right now of foreigners coming here. But you need to understand, if you're a digital nomad and your company you're working for is from the U.S., then your taxation will be on the U.S., but you're working here remotely. However, if your U.S. company has a registered branch in the Philippines, and that's another story. That will be a coin flip on the other side. Um, I'll be honest with you, I have not actually dwelt on that in detail. However, when I actually go through it, it actually depends on the plan of that foreigner moving to another country. Because if I see it that way, this is just my opinion, Nomad Visa more likely will be more focused on the Philippine consulate outside the Philippines. Why? They are requiring foreign documents, business, establish, uh, business documents of the company that you work for, your employment contracts with them, and your tax returns, which is one of the requirements there. Are you, are you able to go to that quickly? And if that would be the case right now, if speaking of a nomad visa, it would actually come to a remote work setup. If it's a remote work setup, it's not here in the Philippines. So more likely, the application of that nomad visa will be more on focus on the consulate offices outside the Philippines. Like for example, consulate, Philippine consulate in the US. So before you come here, you can be issued with the, the nomad visa. That is just my opinion as of the time being, but the regulations are still being um, checked and there will be a final regulation soon. However, brief comparison between nomad visa and tourist visa. Nomad visa, two years. Renewable, I think, every year, if I'm not mistaken. Tourist visa, three years. So which would you prefer? Because things right now, like those documents, I don't know how how challenging is it to provide, especially if you're going to be submitting it to the Philippine consulate. It 
would be a foreign document because that Philippine consulate is an extension of the jury, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, territory of the Philippines in a foreign land. And that those documents that are listed might be considered as a foreign document. Before they accept that, you need to, you, you need to authenticate it. Then you need to apostle it. Now, my question is, do you have time? If you're, if you're just talking earlier that in the U.S. it's just like bam, 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 okay? I don't know. Because once you bam, 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 slow, you lose money. I think that's how you think there. Um, for the work permit side, we can actually do that. That's forming part of our services. So, however, we just need to establish right now that that Philippine document is registered here. That's the first thing. Otherwise, we cannot process anything here. If it's, be, if it's beyond the jurisdiction or territorial jurisdiction of the Philippines, that's out of our reach already. So, uh, however, on the, on the example earlier that if you're working for a U.S. company who has a physical branch or registered here in the Philippines to have those uh, remote set up, and that's another story. We can actually help them that. Where are your offices located? Our offices is located in the heart of the Philippines. The main branch is in Cebu. Um, that's the second city after our capital city. It's a little bit slower and then in the, slower than Manila, faster than Dumaguete. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And the second one is we, have, we also have an office in Dumaguete. And the third one, we do have an office in Manila. How can people hire you and your company, JRC? We, we basically start when you have a need or you, when, when you need something to, okay. You can hire us when you have a need on a visa and uh, immigration and on the side, the real estate, if you need one here. Basically, we just need to be your guide here in the Philippines. Not your tour guide. I just wanted to be clear on that, but we will be your information reference your guide here in the Philippines how to maneuver things because it will be new to you. Like for example, when we go to a trip on the other countries, our first trip, we always have a tour guide because that is where, okay, they navigate it there, they know how to, uh, they know how to navigate us from point A to point B as fast as you can and probably in, probably in, prob okay, probably in the next 6 to 12 months, you already learn to adapt with the culture, you can start to do it by yourself. But if you don't, okay, because if you, you because you have a lot of things that can be done to you, then you can actually retain us. Then we, we don't have the retainers, but when you need of a specific service, then we will talk to you. Thank you so much for your time today, JR. I want to give you the final word. Okay. Um one thing that I would like the one thing that I have learned along the way for the past eight years doing this business is you just need to go to the right firm for you to navigate it properly. Because, take this as a, for example, you don't go to a bake shop when you wanted to have a medicine. So if you, want, if you need like the visa and immigration services, go to the visa firms. I'm not saying it's only us. There's still a lot of people out there. However, you go there because that actually will fit and that will actually guide you on what do you need. You, you don't go to a visa firm when you have the real estate need. You, you need to go to someone who knows that. Like, you, you don't go to a doctor when you're looking for a house. So the main point is value your time because you, you come here for a reason. So don't save penny when you are, where in fact, you're spending dollars. So go to the person that you perceive that will be trustworthy and can help you navigate things for you so that they can actually give you the best result that you wanted to have.